Welcome back students to our Chemistry 1510 video notes. We are going to be talking about naming and writing formulas for acids today. So when we start talking about acids, all of our acids have something in common. They have hydrogens that are in the front of a chemical formula and they are going to be based off of either monatomic ions or polyatomic ions. So for example, if we see, um, let's see, something like this, the H is in front, and so that's how we are going to identify this compound as an acid in chemistry 1510. The other thing is going to be the state. So you already know about solid, liquid, gas, and um, almost said and aqueous, but you don't necessarily know about aqueous. This AQ right here, this is aqueous, or some people pronounce it aqueous. It means dissolved in water, and all of our acids are always dissolved in water. There could also be acids that are based upon polyatomic ions, which is why it's so important to have these memorized for the future. So. Um, maybe your favorite uh, polyatomic ion right now is carbonate, which is CO3 2 minus. And so if you put some hydrogens in front, right, that would be an acid. So our very basic uh, way to illustrate that we're having an acid is having a hydrogen written first and having the AQ for aqueous afterward. So let's look a little bit more in detail about the different kinds of acids we can have. So first, let's talk about binary acids. Remember we said in class, binary means two. So the two things that are going to be involved in a binary acid are going to be a hydrogen and then some other ion. And that ion is going to be a single atom ion, which is called a monatomic ion. I just used X here. X is not on the periodic table, um, just as kind of like a variable like you see in math class, right? It's going to be your negative ion. So I've got two examples here where we are going to uh, create an acid based upon the sulfide ion. So notice how your sulfide ion has a 2 minus charge. When we add a hydrogen to this, it's almost like we are adding an H plus to our S2 minus. So if we only add one H plus, then what we end up with is HS minus. But we want something that's neutral, which is why we need to add two H pluses so that we end up with H2S that's neutral. So the chemical formula for this acid is going to be H2S. Let's talk about how to generate a name for this acid. When we generate a name for a binary acid, it's always going to follow the same pattern. We're going to have hydro as a prefix in the front of the name, and the ending of IDE is going to change to ic acid. Oh, wait. I thought that said ic acid. Let's put, uh, let's just box the ick. So when we write the name for H2S, we're going to recognize that this is binary. We are going to write the prefix of hydro. Then in the middle, we're going to put what's called the parent. The parent is going to be the sulf. And it's not really the sulf because um, there's some pronunciation things going on that are kind of hidden in the background. So imagine I said hydrosulfic acid. So try and say out loud sulfic. I find that difficult to say. I think it's easier to say sulfuric. So knowing what the parent is in the middle here is going to be something that just kind of comes with practice. So we're going to call this sulfur is the parent. And then uh, we're going to add the ick and the acid. 
so hydrosulfuric acid. And there's really not a space between the U or the UR and the ick. I was just trying the ick to make it not be underlined so that I was underlining the parent. Let's do another example. Chloride. Chloride has a negative one charge, and so we only need one hydrogen to cancel out that negative one charge. So same pattern, we're gonna start with hydro. We're gonna put the parent, and for the parent for chloride, it's uh, chlor, C-H-L-O-R. We're gonna end with ick and acid. So the hydrochloric, that's all one word. So we need to make sure that we can classify our acids as binary or ternary because they have different naming systems. So we've done the binary, let's do the ternary. So ternary is three atoms in your acid. And notice how here they're being called oxoacids. They're being called oxoacids because they contain oxygen. So they are gonna be based upon polyatomic ions. If we look at the parent for something like SO4 2 minus, that has the ending of 8. And what we're going to find is if the parent ion, and the parent is just what the acid is based off of, if it has an 8 ending, we're going to change the ending to ick and add the word acid. So in this case, we're not adding any prefixes. We're going to make sure we include the number of hydrogens needed to cancel out the charge. So if I have a two minus charge here, I need to have two hydrogens. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to write my aqueous here. So let's go back and do that really quick so that we know we're talking about an acid. And then for your ternary oxoacids, there's no prefix. You're just going to take the sulfate so S-U-L-F-A-T-E. You're going to cross out the eight and you're going to add instead the ick acid. So again, we look at this and we start to try and say out loud sulfic acid. Sulfic acid just doesn't come off your tongue as easily as sulfuric acid. So in some instances, we might add back in some letters of the parent for pronunciation's sake. And sulfur is one of those examples where we add back in the U-R to make things uh, easier to pronounce. For uh, the next example, we don't have to add any additional letters in. So let's look at perbromate. We are going to write the formula first, so we're gonna have one hydrogen because perbromate has a negative one charge, and we need one H plus to cancel that out. So this is our chemical formula for uh, the acid. Because it's acid, it's dissolved in water, so we're gonna include the aqueous. So when you have a parent that is something like perbromate, that it already has a uh, prefix because the per came from the name of the polyatomic ion. This prefix stays. Don't drop it. Don't change it. Don't do anything to it. It's part of the name of the polyatomic ion. So we're going to take that um, A-T-E ending. We're going to get rid of it. And we are going to put in the ick acid. So we've got ick acid, ick acid. Whereas before we had hydro ick acid. So the difference between your binary and your ternary is here you had hydro ick acid, and this one just has ick acid. So of course it can't be as simple as that. There is one more naming system because what if your ternary oxoacid had a parent that ended in I-T-E instead of A-T-E? So let's scroll down 
and see how to name those things. So if you have something like sulfite, you're going to take the ite ending and change it to us and add the word acid. So again, when we write the chemical formula, we're going to include enough hydrogens to cancel out the charge. And then we are going to write the AQ for aqueous. So for sulfite, we're going to take the sulfite, we're going to take the ite, get rid of it, and we're going to add the us acid. And so now we have another instance where um, pronunciation comes into play. Sulfus acid, it's kind of hard to say. So we add back in the UR, so it's uh, sulfurous acid. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of sneak back in here, put in that UR, and end with acid. The good news is, is that really doesn't happen very often. It really happens for sulfur and phosphorus, uh, and the other ones kind of stay the way that they should be. All right, let's look at this one. Hypobromite is the polyatomic ion's name. So if we take that polyatomic ion, we add a hydrogen because it has a one minus charge that we need to cancel. We put in the BRO because that is the chemical formula for hypobromite. And then we start to write the words um, us acid. Here, we need to keep the hypo because like before, the hypo was part of the name of the polyatomic ion. We're going to keep the brome we're going to get rid of the ite and end with us acid. One of the things that people find really confusing is the fact that here we're seeing hypo. And if you look back up on the top of your notes, binary acids used hydro. That looks terrible. Let's try that again hydro, right? Notice how hydro and hypo pretty darn similar to one another. So we need to make sure that we remember that this is not used here. This is, the hydro is just used for binary acids. So the pattern for ite uh, ternary oxoacids is the parent and then us acid. So Let's talk about why we made a big deal about putting the AQ at the end. There are some compounds that you can see both as acids as well as gases, and hydrogen chloride is one of them. So if we had hydrogen chloride with no aqueous at the end, we would mean that we had a gas. And if so, then this should be correctly named not as hydrogen chloride, but hydrogen mono chloride. Whereas if we had that AQ, meaning that it's dissolved in water, now we need to make sure we name it as an acid. So we do the hydro and we have the ick and we have the acid. So that's something to just keep in mind as we move forward and it's a good uh, reason as to why we continually write this AQ at the end. So let's do one or two more examples. So we did, um, if I gave you the parent, you generated the acid and the name. So now if I give you the formula for the acid, let's figure out how to determine the acid name. First, you need to look at HI aqueous and classify it. Is it binary or is it ternary? So if it's binary, which it is, you're gonna follow that pattern of hydro ic acid. So the middle part is going to be um, an iodine and the kind of abbreviation for iodine is iodo. So this is hydro iodic acid. And you're saying, wait, 
You just told me the abbreviation for uh, iodine was iodo. Ah, but yes, if we did iodoic acid, then we'd have that double vowel issue. And so we drop the first O there. So uh, if you have an acid formula that is based upon a polyatomic ion, let's do this one then you need to first identify the polyatomic ion. So this right here, the IO3, that's your polyatomic ion. That poly polyatomic ion is called iodate. So if we have an 8 ion, we're going to take that ion and we're going to change the 8 ending to ic acid. So this is iodic acid. Look at the difference between the first one we did and the second one we did. That hydro is the only difference between those two and they are very different acids. Let's end with a couple of examples going the opposite direction where I give you the name and you give me the formula. So let's do hmm Let's do uh, this one and this one. So hydrofluoric acid. To go from the name to the formula, you have to pull out the fact that you have a hydro in front. The hydro means we're talking about something that's binary. So when we talk about something that's binary, we know that it's just going to have an H and then the monatomic ion for fluorine, which is F. Remember, F has a 1 minus charge, so you need only an H plus to cancel that out. Because we're good chemistry students, we are going to include the AQ for aqueous, so that we are telling the reader we're talking about an acid that's dissolved in water and not a gas. Then, in the next one that we're going to do, we notice that there is not a hydro, but there is an ic acid. So, Things that came uh, that, that make ic acids, those have eight endings. So this is based off of phosphate. So do you see how you need to know your polyatomic ions? Because if you don't know that phosphate is PO4 three minus, you're sunk, right? You need to know the three minus because that tells you how many hydrogens to write. So if you have a 3 minus, you better have 3 hydrogens to cancel that out. Also notice how here there is an OR in the name of phosphoric acid, but there's no ROR in the name of phosphate. This is another instance like the sulfates going to, you know, uh, sulfurous. Wait, 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 hold on. Um, it's another instance like the uh, sulfur-containing compounds where we added back in the UR for pronunciation's sake. So here we're adding in this OR for pronunciation's sake because otherwise it'd be phosphic acid, which is a little harder to say. Then we include that aqueous to make sure that we know we're talking about an acid. So hopefully this one uh, cleared some acid questions up and uh, get some practice in by filling in the rest of that table and I will see you soon. Thanks for your attention. Katoni signing out.